Welcome to the channel. Thank you everyone for tuning in. On today's video, I'll be reviewing the San Martin 0088G2. This is, of course, the Seamaster homage. And in the unboxing that I did, I went through specifications, dimensions, so I won't be mentioning them on this video. I'll put them up on screen instead. Now, this watch does only come with one color. It's a very dark green. It's a bit of a strange color because even on camera, you can't really see that it's dark green. To me, it's looking like it's almost black. So yeah, they've gone for a very dark color indeed. Um, and therefore, it doesn't really allow you to see just those lines in that detailing present. Yeah, a very uh, odd choice, I'd say. And it's the only color that it comes in. Now, as well as that, you've got a domed ceramic bezel insert. And it looks to be loomed, but I'll confirm that in the loom shot. The dial is a typical San Martin style setup. You've got a printed mini track, which goes around the outside. And you've got applied hour markers. Kind of a maxi style dial, but at the 12 you've got a dual baton. They've all got polished frames on there, very nicely polished, of course, perfectly aligned. Uh, you've got that printed text above the six, which I don't really like. I'm not a huge fan of that font. It just seems a bit blocky and plain. Um, and that hex logo just below the 12. I really do like that logo. I like the finishing there. You've got a matte finishing with some polished details. A very great level of detail on just, you know, such a small hex logo. The dial itself does have, as you can see, some embossed wavy lines across the dial. And unfortunately, it's just the color doesn't really let you see that. But you find that in, in hand also that, you know, even though you can see the, the correct shade, um, however, the lines do sometimes disappear depending on the type of lighting you have uh, but then you know under direct light like this you know they do kind of pop out i think with this model it would have been better if they gave us a few other color options uh, something which kind of allows you to see that detail on the dial but i find it goes under the radar now the handset is great very nicely done got chamfered hands fully polished no brushing present uh, you know seamaster style hands with that skeletonized looks great tape on there great length the second hand does have that lollipop on there but i'm a bit disappointed why they haven't put that capped second hand now let's look at the bezel you've got a fully brushed bezel you can see nice wide scallops present very smooth in hand so let's look at the movement the rotation and okay it's not the loosest it's a bit stiff i think it's a glove so i'll have to take the gloves off and that's the problem with some of these bezels. If they're not, you know, designed right and you've got these smooth edges and these scallops, it makes it very difficult to turn. Yeah, so this is a bit of a surprise from San Martin. You do have the very, like, slightest of uh, movements from the bezel. You definitely can't see it as much, but when you tap it, you definitely feel it. And it sounds quite hollow. Yeah, it's, you know, I'll tell you exactly what it sounds like. You know when you've got a titanium watch and a titanium bezel, that's exactly what it sounds like, and it also operates the same. So this is probably San Martin's worst sounding bezel I've ever felt. Um, there's no, yeah, there is a bit of play, sorry. I thought there was no play, but yeah, you can actually feel some side play. You can actually see it rocking from side to side uh, and lateral play. Yeah, it doesn't sound nice. Does it line up? Let's have a look. Just a fraction off. So I don't know what's going on. You know, it's a new watch from San Martin, I believe. Um, they've never given us a bezel like this before. Um, but yeah, it's it's a bit disappointing. It does feel quite cheap. I think the price for the watch is around £225. Um, so definitely doesn't really, you know, show all the quality present. But, you know, they've never done this before. It's, uh, did they miss a trick? Is it because of the style of the bezel? Who knows, right? Sometimes it is inherent of certain designs and styles of bezels. Uh, but this one... Yeah, just playback, side to side rocking movement, it bounce, it feels very cheap. So, I mean, the bezel is less than ideal. Now, thankfully, the loom is great on this watch. It is very vibrant. You've got clear application, no patchiness. You've got fully loom bezel insert and all the hour markers and the hands do loom up very nicely. Now let's move on to the case and thankfully, you know, being San Martin, they have not failed us on the case like they failed us on the bezel. Now the watch is predominantly brushed. You've got satin-like brushing along the side of the case on the side profile and you've also got this polished beveled edge which is just on the edge of that twisted lug which is highly polished giving you a nice bit of reflection from there, a bit of definition. And on the insides of those twisted lugs, you do have some fine brushing once again. And there's not a whole lot of case on display or lugs. Uh, just due to the bezel size, it does take up much of the case. Um, and you can see, as I said, with the bezel being fully brushed, it does have a good overall match. Moving on to the side of the crown, again, very similar, very fine brushing on those scallops. 
and the crown guards themselves are fully polished the crown tucks in very nicely it does have a very good and smooth operation there's no issues there and you've got the san martin hex logo so the finishing is actually up to san martin standard very very exquisite very clean cut transitions and i really do like those highlights on the twisted logs on the case back and uh, they have come up with a plain case back and they've been doing this for the last you know i don't know how many models i've kind of lost count i think they've just gone away from having a logo on the case back uh, and i'm not really sure why that is now the movement this is the seiko epson yn55 movement it's from seiko's sister company predominantly used in the orient series of watches uh, it does hack and wind uh, and the only two observations i have uh, with this movement compared to the seiko ns35 is that the rotor is a bit louder than the ns35 and on the wind-up, it is slightly harsher when you are winding this in comparison to the Seiko NH35. Now, in terms of accuracy, let's put this on the time grapher and let's see what this is running okay, at. So this movement is a little interesting to say the least. Now, I'm having trouble finding the lift angle uh, for this YN55 movement on the internet. Um, and I think that does have a bit of an impact. So, for example, I put the same lift angle as the NH35 and it gave me a beta error of 3.4. Uh, but if you put that to the side, the amplitude is okay. Uh, and the accuracy is pretty decent minus six seconds the only issue i have is there's a fair bit of noise as you can see the reading so if you've got a stable movement you should find a kind of a linear line with all the dots grouped closely together but when you see the scattering uh, around that's not really a good reading uh, so i think this movement you know it might not be the best it might not be as good as a seiko n35 uh, because i am seeing some inconsistencies with it um, but i've put the lift angle at 50 degrees and that's just a number i pulled out of a hat it might not even be correct so if you guys do know the lift angle for the yn55 if somebody out there does know please get in touch let me know so i can verify this now i bet you guys are also wondering because this is a no date dial does it have a ghost position uh, yes it does have a ghost position but what's worse it does also have a date disc still present um you can definitely hear that date kind of clicking around um and i think that's just just poor watch building i mean i modify watches and i've sold a fair few on you know various platforms and even when i use uh, kind of dateless dials um i still go to the trouble of unscrewing the top of the NH35 or NH36 and removing the date disc and the day disc to make sure there's at least no clicks so from San Martin you know again with the price they demand and the kind of position they hold on AliExpress uh, that is pretty lazy watchmaking it's got to be called out and I think most watchmakers that do that as well or you know brands out there it's pure laziness now moving on to the bracelet the bracelet looks the part you know usual San Martin high quality bracelets you've got a five link design yes they are all individual links of course, it's a solid end link uh, and all solid links they do have you know really well made screwing links and you can see the detailing present across the bracelet even the sides are brushed you've got this linear hairline brushing present across all the links you know great articulation to those links i really like how the light kind of washes off that bracelet it looks really good um, and it feels great as well there's no kind of edginess to the sides of those links as you can see there's just a kind of not a bevel as such just the edges seem smoother uh, and i always call it out on san martin bracelets because they do have quite an edgy feel but this one's okay in hand and the only bit of edginess you will feel is on the center links the ones with the polished sides um you know but i don't expect them to go into that much detail and finish that off and to be honest you really won't feel it now you do have uh male end links they don't fully articulate the polishing is a nice touch to those inner links it really breaks it apart gives it a much more dressier feel and look to that bracelet it's a taper from 20 millimeters down to 18 millimeters a usual san martin clasp with four micro adjustments i really like the level of detail on this clasp extremely well made and i like that they put the you know logo on there it just enlarges that logo on the dial and shows you really the amount of detail available on this logo so let's get this watch on wrist and let's see how it looks so here's a san martin sn 0088 g2 on my six and a half inch wrist um and it's it fits okay right you know it is slightly bigger watch 42 millimeters um you know by a 47.8 log to log that is further extended with those male end links to 53 and a half but they do have quite a decent slope um so the first link does wrap around the wrist but you do get the second link kind of being exposed when it does fully wrap over um, and you know not a lot of people like that you can just see the tops of those links exposed yeah so you know in terms of fitment it might not be the best for a smaller wrist you definitely need a wrist of around you know six and three quarters maybe seven inches and above uh, and you'll have a much better fit the bracelet itself is beautifully made uh, like i said you know it is a dressed up bracelet 
really nice detailing you know very high quality bracelet indeed you cannot knock it i love what they've done to the center links um yeah it looks great the case as well finished extremely well uh, you know you can't knock it great amount of detailing and brushing and i think where the failure on this watch is there's a couple the first one not so much a failure more of an observation maybe an oversight i think the color is just a bit too dark um you know you can't really see uh, the beauty of the dial and those kind of engraved lines um you know maybe they should have done a few different colors or maybe lighten this up uh, quite a fair bit the second thing of course the bezel is awful i did not expect such a dramatic drop from san martin um it would have been okay if there was a slight issue but you know just being quite rattly moving around the place and being just a bit difficult to turn um you know i don't mind misalignment because it is very fractionally small um and i don't mind misalignments as long as the you know the movement itself is fairly smooth uh, or quite tactile however they have kind of really missed a trick and let us down on that bezel rotation and the third thing would be that lazy watch building uh using the ghost position with still the date real present and you know i'm not too convinced with the seiko yn55 movement or the epson yn55 i know anecdotally they are pretty accurate but i didn't like what i saw on the time grapher so hopefully i'd like some feedback from you guys watching is there a lift angle uh, so i can check why it truly runs at aside from that the hands are made well the dial is great and you know overall it is a decent looking watch i don't think anything i've mentioned is a major deal breaker but they are major points to consider so that's it from me today guys hope you enjoyed that review and i'll see you on the next video